Hello, how's it going? So yesterday uh, was the first day that the Museum of Everything Else actually opened to, to the public. Before, there have been people coming along, but it's been to prior arrangement and stuff and just for this and that. But yesterday, it was open between 12 and 6, yesterday being Sunday, so it was a ticketed event. Um, I didn't really shout out about it much because there was very limited amount of tickets. Overall, throughout the day, there was only 30 tickets available because trying to keep number one a bit of a distance and uh yeah just 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 seeing how it went and overall it went quite very well there's a uh, the next open day is this coming sunday and whether it's going to be every single sunday from then or every other sunday or if it's going to be more often or whatnot we're still figuring it out just working it out but right now we're taking it week by week purely because of the pandemic and stuff and social distancing keeping it up so right now the tickets are actually available there's a ticket link for purchasing a ticket for this coming sunday uh, over on patreon and youtube membership and tomorrow after you know like i just figured that let them let the patrons and whatnot have uh, access to the, the first to choose the time uh, time kind of time windows or whatever which are very loose it, it, which are reasonably loose and then tomorrow I'll be sharing it publicly so you can come along have a look and stuff uh, today I've been putting together the uh, what is it called Les stereo Leslie speakers with variable uh, f variable speed controls for the Game Boy Mega Machine hopefully they will be done for the next open day which is this Sunday it's the first of August anyway with that all over yesterday uh, uh, yeah, there was lots of interesting people. Uh, good to see everybody trying out different things. I managed to not get any footage at all of the day. I was too busy trying to get stuff working. So if anybody was there yesterday and has any photos or footage or any any proof that it actually happened, then uh, please uh, comment and let me know or send them via email or in an Instagram message or something. But yeah, but uh, at the last in the last window, uh, which was between I don't know, I think he, I think the Martin Martin King turned up. Uh, look, sorry for the dirty nails. I've been working on this for the last twenty half an hour. Um, I donated this over to the website. What is it? What is this big hunk of junk? Well, uh, Martin King is um, he's uh, fabricates a lot of uh, solves a lot of problems with Arduinos and stuff for various different projects be it for uh, I don't know for TV or explosions or stuff like that and um, his website uh, his YouTube channel which is really he's done, he does, he's done loads more than on the YouTube channel the YouTube channel does not do justice to the amount of projects that he has done and he says that as well it's like it's fine really cool dude had a chat his dad was a telephone engineer um, Clark and works Clark and works I've written it down on a piece of paper so I might be wrong here um, uh, he was in charge of the changeovers between Strougers and other silence things and he also mentioned that his dad made similar demonstrator shim setups like the one that Richard has made for schools and stuff to demonstrate Strouger setups and stuff well regardless he said that his dad just wanted rid of this and um, uh, yeah so he turned up with this and I'm more than happy with it because it's really cool it's something that I do not have what we have here is, uh, well, initially I wasn't sure uh, exactly what it was. Initially I thought this, it reminded me quite a lot of the uh, American, the Bell Systems telephone exchanges, and it may be, and I'm sure I'll be very up to date after reading the comments about this. Uh, I've already been told by uh, Kevin uh, on Instagram who commented that this is called, this is a pre-2000 uh, Strouger switch. So, um, for instance, if we look at this, this is a group selector. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hundred outlet. I'm pretty sure hundred outlet group selector pre 2000. This one is a 2000. This one's what the setup is on. You can see it's a lot smaller. Uh, and and then this one is a 3000. And they they vary. They vary this and that here and there. This one is the one that uh, is. Uh, with in the demonstration setup in the UAX 13, this one goes up, along, oop, and then to clear, it goes down and then back. So it goes up, along, down, and back. When, oh, geez, come on. When this one, this one's a 3000, it goes up, oh, check it's clear, it goes up and then along, and then instead of going down and back, it actually goes back on itself.
and then comes back down. Apparently these ones were a little bit more, uh, they wore out quicker, I'm guessing because, and more, less evenly, they wore out less evenly apparently because what they do is these things are used constantly. So the problem is, is if let's say this one's always going only a little bit along, well these ones would wear out a lot quicker than these ones because these ones hardly get used. When on this one, they all go, they go up and then they go through the whole bank. So at least, it doesn't go back and double wear these and single wear these, if you see what I mean. So that, so that's a slight, that's the, uh, one of the differences between the two. I don't know, I haven't got a bleeding clue about any of this still. So I'm gonna, it's always fun to see what everybody's commented. No, no, it's all wrong, it's all wrong, you gotta, it's all wrong. So um, please check in the comments because I'm just a blivering idiot, I must say so. Uh, so what I've done is I'll have a, have a look in here. So first off, this turned up, when this turned on, it was um, a little bit worse for wear. It was a bit, it wasn't really doing much because all of these switches, these switches down here, they were all bungled out. As you can see in the picture, yeah, they weren't looking too pretty. And right now they don't look too pretty still, but I've just done the best I can. I'm not expecting them really to work. This one's awfully close to that. I'm having a feeling might need a little bit of sideways adjustment or something. But now it actually runs reasonably, reasonably freely. So um, you can, right now you can actually, it actually does its does its thing to some extent. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, it is, it is doing it. Just gotta figure out where it's getting stuck. Oh, it's getting stuck up here. I wasn't looking up at the top. Okay, so it's sort of working. And um, I haven't wired it up yet, but I've checked. What I've done is I've oiled the, the thing. I've checked uh, the ratchet. So this is the, the up relays back here. This 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 big old chunky so um, coil right here is in charge of pushing this mechanism. If you look in there, you can see it moving. And then what that does is it actually pushes the thing up. And then there's another one around here. You can see the one right at the bottom. You push this down and it actually pushes a mechanism right here to actually push it sideways. And if you look here, it's actually doing its thing. But the, the difference thing that I saw to this was there's a different there's a different setup right here which actually frees it and it bounces back like that. Uh, it's actually, it actually require, requires, I found, I think it requires gravity. The other ones don't seem to require gravity quite as much as this one. Also on top, uh, this, I found out, is the spring that makes it ding back and I've had to increase this because it's all a little bit old and creaky. So I've had to do that. But hopefully now, maybe we'll be able to just test it. I mean, I, I know I'm just gonna get loads of people be like, oh no, don't do all that, but you know. It's just all about uh, experimentation. That's what this world's about. And annoying people because you're doing it wrong, but ah, yeah. Okay, right, I'm gonna, so, oh, oh. Yeah, it's still very, 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 oh, it's a little bit ropey around there. I could just tighten up the spring a tiny little bit. Oh, it does. Um, where's always left and right. Ugh. Sort of doing this job. So what I need to do now is I need to plug it in. I'm guessing that the standards are similar. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get the 48 volt power supply. Well, just literally a 48 volt. It's literally a laptop power supply that I'm using. I just use this dodgy 40, 50 volt power supply laptop thing. I'm gonna plug this in and we're gonna see if we can actually get it to do something. Uh, there's test ports here. So hopefully one of these test ports will actually uh, plug up to a telephone and we'll make it do some noisy noisies. Woo! Anyway, I'll see you in a sec. To be honest, looking around the back, I've gotta be honest, I'm not 100% sure what I'm looking for here, but, ah, uh, bloody Nora. It's looking incredibly sparse. <laughs> ooh, ooh, lovely jubbly. But maybe, maybe we're all right. I'm gonna see if I can actually solder the, power, the points onto the back. Hopefully it carries the same standard as the other ones and we can see if we can get some life coming out of this thing. Right, so I've got 48 volts wired up to the power at the back and um, there is some movement, but I'm just guessing that there's gonna be some dodgy contacts. One can only assume, oh, well that one's ropey actually. Ah, uh, that one goes underneath. Oh.
Okay, so after a little bit of fiddling, it turns out this shaft is a little bit, it's got a, we've got a bent shaft here. It's a little bit bent, but I managed to sort it out a little bit. Um, not 100% sure what's going on, I'm just kind of following what usually happens where A triggers B, but there's not much, it's, it's a little bit, it's gonna take a little bit of fettling, but currently we've got, a, we've got it doing stuff. So if we put, just push B, it will go up. I oh know, B and C. Now if you remove it, but then when you free it, oh, it's come back. Okay, so I've done something. I actually managed to bend the shaft back to a, a reasonable position. So it's, it's sort of working. I can't seem to figure out how to uh, trigger this, trigger the uh, setup. And the other thing is, A doesn't seem to work. So it's, oh no, it is. Not, it doesn't seem to be triggering B really. So maybe B's had it, maybe that one's had it. Hmm. Ah, we're getting somewhere sort of-ish, really. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. All right, I'll just put this, I've just got to stack things on top of things to get them in shot. Uh, yeah, I, I, every time I fiddle, it seems to work. And that seems to be the thing with these things. It's nine times out of 10. It hasn't been something that's broken. It's just dirty as fudge. So I think I found the test points. It's, uh, so when I turn on A, you see, I don't know if you can see, but C actually triggers, but B doesn't. And it should be, I think. So it's not really doing much, but if I held down B, let the dial go, watch it. Oh yeah. And then it's looking for the next bit. I don't know whether it's gonna run across or. To be honest, these things might vary completely. And yeah, the comments are gonna be rife with uh, some good information, I'm hoping. Um, Cause this is just, it would just be fun to have running. So, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, B, B's not seem to, doesn't seem to be doing much. So maybe B needs swapping or maybe something needs cleaning. But I mean, okay, it's doing something. It's, it's, it's pretty damn cool. So these things, as far as I'm aware, these things would have been, I don't know, um, 1920s up to the 50s, potentially, 40s, late 40s. And you know, they just got that, that really noticeable uh, case that I thought was just an American thing, but you learn something new every day, don't you? Just look how cool that looks. But obviously it's not gonna work because the B relay doesn't seem to wanna do anything. Ooh, how annoying. But yeah, just a little bit of an a video. So if you know anything about this, please comment below. If you think I'm an absolute plonker, then also please do let me know. But I am curious and I like playing around with these things. I'm amazed by how difficult it is actually to try and track down the correct info on these sort of things on the internet. It seems that you need to know people more than you would in let's say the synthesizer world. It seems that the synthesizer world is a lot better publicly documented and things like this. But it's interesting regardless, and that's what sort of makes me more into the idea because it's a bit more of a chase. It's a bit more of like a hunt down, but this thing is cool. It's the oldest one that I've got compared to, like I said, compared to the, 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 what is that one? So yeah, if you're interested to see everything as well as the stereo Leslie speaker, which will be uh, hopefully up and running for the weekend, then go and check out the ticket links, which will be public. And if you're a patron, well, they're already public or on YouTube, a membership on um, Look Mum No Computer channel. The link is already public. The reason being is because they already fund the museum, so may as well get first dibs on the tickets so they can choose the slots. Anyway, have a good time.